fold this in half so it doesn't make so much noise flopping around. <laughs> hey there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Today I'm coming at you with the Hades book tag, which as soon as I saw Xander over at this Keep Do It, I knew I had to do because it is based on Greek mythology, and I'm not the biggest Greek mythology person, but I've been reading more stuff in that vein recently, and I like it, including like Song of Achilles and stuff. And Xander is one of the people who has uh, convinced me to try more and read more and then I'm gonna like it and they're right. So this is a kind of longer tag. It's 20 questions, all connected with people, characters, concepts in Greek mythology. And because there's so many questions, I'm not going to do full synopses for all of the books, but I am going to try to sell you on the books in the context of the question, which will make sense as we go. And I'm gonna try and pronounce all these names right. I took like a little pronunciation guide <laughs> rewatching Xander's video, but all mistakes are my own, of course. First prompt is Zagreus, a book that you read for escapism. And I'm cheating and I'm choosing an author that I've loved reading this year for that reason. It is Erica Ridley. She writes historical romance, usually in the Regency, often with marginalized characters, whether they be people of color or in my favorite book maybe so far this year, The Perks of Loving a Wallflower. It is a sapphic romance between a non-binary person and a woman. And it is, it is so, so good. It is warm, found family. There could be secrets, but the communication is what's important. Tommy is a non-binary rake. She is just, oh, I love her so much. And in addition to the wonderful romance in this book, we have a bit of a caper. We have a little bit of writing some wrongs and it's just so much fun. I have a full video about this book actually, um, if you wanna hear more. Thanatos, name a book that deals with death or a book with an unlikely hero. And considering that I love medical stuff and I've read quite a bit about death, I'm going to go with the first one. It's Extreme Measures, Finding a Better Path to the End of Life by Just Cannot Exeter. And what sets this book apart is that the author is certified not only in critical care, like being working in the ICU, but also as a palliative care doctor. So she knows both ends. She knows the extreme measures that can be done to try and keep someone alive. And she also has studied the ways to help people die in the manner they want and how they can be in opposition to each other. It was incredibly interesting for that. And I learned so, so much from this and I liked her writing too. And she also talks about how valuable interpreters are, which thank you, because if you don't know, I'm an interpreter. <laughs> Achilles, name a book with a good mentor character. And I am going with nonfiction for this one, actually. Zen and the Art of Archery by Eugen Harrigal. I read this in translation. The translator's name was not noted, unfortunately. This is written by a German guy who came to Japan, stayed here for several years, and wanted to learn the art of Zen archery, which has a lot more spiritual stuff going on in it rather than just like Olympic sport archery. And uh, he finds a teacher who is really amazing and interesting. And the book itself made me think about, because at the time I was just learning how to become an interpreter, what I look for in a mentor, how I might be a good mentor for people coming up behind me. And it was so valuable for that, as well as being interesting. And this would be a really good choice for nonfiction November, actually. Patroclus, name a book that deals with amnesia or has a tragic love story. And this is me. So we're absolutely going for the first one. And it's A Cowboy to Remember by Rebecca Weatherspoon. Amnesia is a trope that is used a lot in romance and up until now I've thought was pretty cheap and I've actually avoided a lot of amnesia romances but this one is so good not only because it's Rebecca Weatherspoon who's one of my favorite romance authors ever but the way it's handled and how it doesn't depend on the heroine getting her memory back they have all these and the, the medical side is covered on top of just being a great kind of a small town romance with a close-knit family uh, it's on like a dude ranch and it's just oh, great book. I have a whole video about this one too. Dusa, name a character who is a complete cinnamon roll and it is the hero, I cannot remember his name, of Dance All Night by Alexis Daria. Daria has become more well known recently for her current series, which starts with You Had Me Rola, which is also great, that's wonderful. But this series, and this is an independently published novella that goes with it, it's a holiday novella, it's fun. And this character, this guy, he is so wonderful and sweet. He doesn't have any bit of guile in his body whatsoever. And he is trying to convince this woman that he likes that uh, holiday magic is actually a thing and they have three dates to figure it out. And it warmed my heart. And it is a holiday romance. So again, good time to be reading it. Hypnos, name a book you would read as a bedtime story. And I had 
hard time picking one for this because normally what I do is I pick my maybe my lowest stakes book I don't want to say my most boring book to read as I go to sleep to help me drift off nothing that's going to surprise me or scare me or leave awful images in my head like some nonfiction might that might appear in my dreams because no I ended up picking The Love Study by Chris Ripper because this is a really sweet romance and it's kind of domestic in scope. It's going over to somebody's house, basically <laughs> hanging out with friends. It feels really cozy like that. And they also have these great conversations about the nature of relationships and what it means to be in a queer relationship because this is a, a non-binary person with a pansexual guy. And those are super interesting to think about. So I can just imagine myself reading this, going, oh yeah, feeling the fuzzies, having the thoughts and drifting off to sleep. Chaos, name the oldest book on your shelf. And I could have chosen, I guess, a physical copy that I've had the longest, but I decided to go with the book that was written the longest ago. So oldest in that sense. The Pillow Book of Seishonagon. This one is translated by Ivan Morris. This was probably written around the year 1000, the height of the Heian era in Japan, which is characterized by lots of culture and poetry and like court life and all this stuff going on. And Seishonagon was part of that. But what is so memorable and interesting about this book is her wit and sometimes her vindictiveness and just how easy it is to connect with her even though we're a thousand years beyond what she ever saw. Kron, name a book with gold on the cover and I'm going with Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. It's very on topic. Um, it is a retelling of the myth of Achilles and Patroclus and all that stuff going on. It was a good introduction for me to it and uh, can you see? Oh, it's not shining as much as I was hoping. That's gold on there. Nyx, name a dark book, be it cover or subject matter. I think I got it covered on both. It's Our Bodies, Our Battlefields by Christina Lamb, which talks about rape being used as a weapon of war. I read this for the booktube prize, so I'll leave a link down below to the vlog where it appeared because yeah, it it's a lot. There's a lot. Hmm. Rape during war is not fun. Very dark. Yes, dark, but good. And it's a subject that needs to be talked about more and that male reporters haven't done a good job bringing to light, but Christina, Christina Lamb has done the work, has been on the ground in these places, and has the stories to tell. Hades, name a book with a family secret. I'm going with Witch Mark by C.L. Polk. This is a gas lamp fantasy MM romance, but one of the main characters is from a magical family and has that magic flowing through his own veins, but he's keeping it hidden in secret for reasons. And this is both interesting and sweet, and it's the beginning of a trilogy that does a lot of interesting stuff. I still have to read the third book though. Ah, Meg, name a book with a complex villain. I'm going with Pretty Little Line by Slika Snyder because we meet a character who's obviously in with all the bad dudes, is doing bad stuff. But as the book goes on, we realize more about him and how he may be trying to do something a different way. And I'm not saying that makes him even less evil, but ooh, it, it's, it's complex. To Tiffany, name your favorite murder mystery. And I'm not a huge murder mystery person, so I'm just going to go with one of my recent ones, which was This Rough Magic by Mary Stewart. And this is from like the 1960s, but it ages incredibly well and it has lots of connections to Shakespeare's The Tempest, but you don't have to have read The Tempest in order to enjoy it. A woman goes to visit her sister who is in Greece, relaxing, and uh, they're on the beach all the time. Then dead body washes up and things go from there. Alecto, name your favorite book with erotic scenes. And there is a second choice to this, but I didn't even bother because I have the perfect book for this prompt. It is The Rose by Tiffany Rice. This stands alone, even though it's part of a series, and it has a lot of Greek mythology woven through it. And she and a guy end up drinking from a, like a goblet, I think it's called a calyx, right? And uh, it ends up, they fall asleep and you end up living out your fantasies and because she is very interested in Greek mythology it ends up being with a lot of them characters from Greek mythology a lot of stuff going on and it's very whoo it's hot it's interesting and it's one of my favorite books by Tiffany Rice and she knows how to do like I can name other books by her that even have even more hot erotic scenes but this one was just the perfect mix of everything. Tartarus name a book with monsters in it. Morning Glory Milking Farm by C.S. Nacosta. This is the, the the creature being milked is a minotaur and it's not drinking milk. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's really good. You just gotta trust me on this one, it's good. 
Asphodel name a book with fire on the cover or in the title, and I'm going with both, Breathing Fire by Jamie Lowe. This is about female inmate firefighters in California, and I'm reading it right now, and I can tell you that the nonfiction, like the narrative nonfiction writing, is very good, and what I like about it is it's not only covering the actual act of firefighting and digging lines and stuff, it's talking about uh, the injustice and some of the laws that got these women into prison and the system, like the sexism in there and the racism in there, talking about how these inmates are exploited for their labor. They only get paid a dollar an hour while they're out there doing life-threatening work on, and life-saving work on the line in the middle of these wildfires. And super duper, I'm enjoying it a lot. Can't read this one right before bed. The fires get a bit scary. Elysium. Name a book that deals with heroes of some sort. And bonus points if they're a dick. These people are not dicks, though. It's Deal with the Devil by Kit Roca. It is a science fiction romance that takes place in a post-apocalyptic United States, and it's mercenary librarians who are bringing together a community and doing so much good there, and they're kind of like heroes in that way. And they end up teaming up with these super soldiers for the evil company that has kind of taken over government in this world, but they have gone AWOL because they can't stand what they were being ordered to do. And now they're using all of their enhanced abilities for good. So yeah, they're kind of like heroes too. Temple of Sticks, name a disgusting book. It could be because of the subject matter or an ugly cover. I'm going with the former with His to Claim by Tyler Vaughn because this is an alien science fictional romance where there's refugees from a place that's like planet Earth and they land on another planet that doesn't sustain life very well but is owned by these other alien folks. And they send a ship of men every year to this planet to rape the women and make them pregnant and then take the babies away from them. And that is not dealt with very well in the book. And the heroine's right in the middle of it. And no, no, disgusting. We're getting there, only three more left. Next is Nectar. Name a book with characters you wanna be friends with and I have hemmed and hawed over this one for a really long time because I think it would be great to be friends with the characters in the Foreigner series by C.J. Cherry because Bren is an interpreter and I really enjoy his relationship with his bodyguard and with other people around and maybe I would be like Jace, like somebody who's kind of flying in an expert in my own way but also learning the language and doing stuff. I think that'd be cool. It's also a very fraught world though. I don't know if I would enjoy the world that much. And then I thought, okay, maybe I should be in a memory called Empire by Arcady Martin because that is following another character who is an interpreter of sorts, a diplomat of sorts, very similar in some ways. And the language and the culture in the text colony Empire is so interesting and I would want to be friends with Three Sea Glass and Twelve Azalea and to enjoy times with them but in the two book series that as it is now there's not a lot of time to enjoy stuff either. The world is very fraught so maybe that's not a good one either. So without discounting any of those earlier books and considering they've only read one book in this next series and it's quite a long series but I think it'll stand up. Um, Freehand by E.M. Lindsay. This is a contemporary. <laughs> So we're back on Earth and it follows all these people that are connected to a tattoo shop and it is incredibly diverse and all these, it's found family and loving and people accepting for themselves for who they are and accepting other people for who they are and it is heartwarming, heartwarming and I need to get back to the series especially, it's always a good time for something a little bit heartwarming, right? Yes, so I think I'll just slot in with them quite well, pretty sure. Have to read more. Centaur Heart, to name a book that gives you life, and I realized that I talked about this by mistake earlier, but it's Perks Loving a Wallflower by Erica Ridley for all of the reasons I mentioned before. Again, full review down below. And last is Daedalus Hammer, name a book with a cover that could use an upgrade, and I'm going with His Beauty by Jack Harbon because when I read this, this is another Beauty and the Beast retelling, this cover is not a good indication of what's happening in this book whatsoever. The heroine is kick-ass. She wields a sword quite well. She will do whatever she has to do in order to survive and that's not in line with this cover. It also didn't show up well in black and white on my e-reader screen. Luckily, the cover has already been updated. This is what it looks like now, which is a better representation of what's actually in the book, so yay. So there we have the Hades book tag and I had so much fun coming up with answers for all of these questions. It was a blast. Thank you so much Xander for making this tag in the first place and I'm not going to tag anybody in particular. If you think you would have fun doing this, please do and let me know if you do. And my question for all of you is 
do you know of any good fiction books about Greek mythology that I should read? It could be very, like I've read Sounds of the Girls and The Song of Achilles, and those are very much centered on the mythology. It could have a tangential element of mythology that works too, but anyway, let me know your suggestions down below. I would love to hear them. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.